In this circle, we are given that O is the center, CB and AB are tangents, and then length CD is equal to AD. So we can see that they've given us that by showing us those two lines over there. First question is, prove that OB and EC are parallel. Can you remember from one of the very first theorems we looked at, we said that if you have a circle where you have a line coming from the center and it hits a chord exactly in half, then what did it do to the angle formed over here? Well, well done if you remember that it's 90 degrees. So for example, we could say here that angle D1 is 90 degrees because we have a line coming from the center and it's hitting that chord AC exactly in half. How do we know it's in half? Well, they've showed us that CD is equal to AD. And so the reason for that is the line from the center to the midpoint of the chord. Then if we look at angle C2, well, what letters are forming that angle? So to see what letters are forming that angle, you start off at C and you work your way backwards along two lines and you see where you end up. Always go to the edge of the circle. Well, have a look at that. It's, it's letters E, A that come together at C. Now, E, A is a diameter. Why? Because it goes through the center. And so that means that angle C2 is 90 degrees. Remember, we said that if you have a circle that has a diameter, then any angle that that diameter forms on the edge of the circle will always be 90 degrees. The reason for that was angle, not angle, sorry, angle in a semicircle. If that doesn't make sense, then you just need to watch the video on angle on a semicircle. And so if you look at angle C2 and angle D1, they're both 90 degrees, and so they add up to 180. And so therefore we can say that angle side OB is parallel to EC. Why? Because that's co-interior angles. We know that co-interior angles, they're not the same. Well, they can be, but the, the main reason is that co-interior angles, they always add up to 180 degrees. But now, because we are doing this in reverse, normally they would tell us that the two lines are parallel. And then what we would say is that this angle and this angle should add up to 180 degrees because of co-interior. However, in this example, we have proved, well, we, we showed that the angles add up to 180 degrees first. And then because of that, we say that the lines are parallel. So we have to add the word converse over there. So it's converse co-interior angles. You could, if you wanted to, you could have worked out D2 as 90 degrees, and then you would have had D2 being the same as C2, and then you could say that the lines are parallel because of corresponding angles. So just remember, whenever we're dealing with parallel lines, you always got to look out for either the F, the U, or the N. So the F was called corresponding, where those two angles are equal. The U is when they add up to 180, and then the N is called alternating, and that's when the angles are like that in the corner. And so in this example, we used corresponding. So be, not corresponding, co-interior. So because they added up to 180, we can say that those two lines are parallel. The next question says that if B1 is X, so we can just put a little X over there, find E, which is over here, in terms of X. So in this triangle over here, we know that angle D3 is 90 degrees. We know that angle B1 is X. And so we can say that angle A2 is going to be equal to 180 minus 90 minus x. Why? Because of angles or sum of angles in a triangle. And so if you go simplify that, you would see that a2 is going to be equal to 90 minus x. And what we should have actually added first was that d3 is 90 degrees. Why? Because it's vertically opposite. So it's vertically opposite angles. So because remember, it's opposite to d1. And d1 we already proved as 90 degrees. We now know A2, so A2 we can take as 90 minus X. Now have a look at angle A2. A2 is trapped in between a tangent, it's trapped in between tangent AB, and it's trapped in between chord AC. Does that ring a bell at all? 
when you have a tangent and a chord connecting and there is an angle trapped in between well that's tan chord theorem now a tan chord theorem says is that a2 will be the same as any other angle that is formed by a and c so let's start let's look at a and c and see what angles they form so we're going to start off at c and just follow a line and see where we end up and let's follow a line from a and see where we end up and so a and c comes together at e so that means that angle e is going to be the same as angle a2 because of the tan chord theorem if you are battling to understand the tan chord theorem then just go watch the video on the tan chord theorem and so angle e will also be equal to 90 minus x